Milos Nikolic from the what do we like? Uh, whatever. Is it open? Oh, it's still Oxford, yeah. Uh, okay. Apparently, has a new job now. He's still, I suppose, under Oxford affiliation. Yes. And uh, is now moving to Edinburgh. Right. And he's going to talk, uh, uh, yeah, about incremental view maintenance. Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. Um, my name is Miloš Nikolic and today I'll present a joint work with Daniel Teanu uh, in which we study the problem of efficient incremental computation of analytical queries. Now, we consider uh, a diverse set of analytical queries ranging from simple SAM aggregates to linear algebra programs and machine learning models. Now, in all these cases, analytical tasks are running over uh, joins of input relations, but these joins, uh, these input relations, can change over time. And our goal is to, pr uh, is, is to provide up-to-date results as, as the underlying data changes. Now, um, of course, we don't want to recompute everything from scratch whenever one of the input relation changes. Uh, instead, we would like to exploit the fact that these input changes are typically small in size to derive only the incremental change in the output result. And this technique has been widely used in databases and it's known as incremental view maintenance. Now, a common approach when we have analytics that we need to run over joins is to first compute the join result and then run anal analytics on top of that. However, computing joins might be expensive and might lead to large intermediate results. However, that might be the only option in case that these analytics are executed or running inside an external engines like R or, or TensorFlow, which require these join results to be pre-computed before uh, they, 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 they are accepted as input. And furthermore, these external engines usually don't support any kind of incremental computation. So in, in this work, we introduce factorized IVM, uh, or FIVM for short, which is a unifying framework for incremental computation of diverse analytical tasks. So FIVM decomposes this computation based on the query structure, and this is very similar to hypertree de decomposition, and then it pushes analytics past joins in order to form views that represent partial results over, over the input data sets. Now these views might be materialized in case in order to support efficient incremental computation. For instance, if you have update to one of the input sources, the, these updates can actually uh, benefit from, from the materialized view that already pre-joins the other two sources. Now let's have a very simple example. Suppose I want to compute a count over a join of three relations, R, S, and T. Here I first join S and T on C, and the, re the result of that is joined with R on A. Now one way to do deal with this query is to compute the join result and then count the number of tuples in the output. Of course, this is not the most efficient way. We can exploit here the distributivity of multiplication over addition to rewrite this query and push the SAM aggregate past joins to compute partial counts over input relations which are grouped by the join variables. Once we have these partial counts, we can combine them together to produce the final aggregate. Okay, and this is already a form of factorized computation because we can compute once partial counts over, for instance, input relation S and T and then reuse them when, when we do the join on C. Okay, but this is just a, sum, a simple sum aggregate or count aggregate, so what? Well, in fact, just imagine now that instead of computing just integers, count integers, we, comp we have aggregates of an arbitrary type R. Okay, and suppose that we redefine the meaning of the sum operation or the addition and the multiplication such that they both work on the values from this, uh, from, from, uh, this, uh, over this type R. And furthermore, we can generalize the sum expression to be a product of functions where each function g maps domain values to aggregate values of this particular type. Now, it turns out that if the, the set of such values form a structure called the ring, 
then we can perform the same factorized and incremental computation that we have seen for the count query over uh, the, the, this generalized sum aggregate. And it turns out that using these ring values as aggregate values can actually uh, uh, cover many interesting application scenarios. And one of such scenarios is learning uh, linear regression over joints. So in this setting, the joint result X uh, is used as input to the linear regression problem. Our goal is to find the model parameters theta that uh, best capture the relationship between features and labels. And here we assume that labels are part of the joint result. Now, a typical way to solve this optimization problem is to use batch gradient descent and iteratively update model parameters. Now, in order to speed up this procedure, we, we, have, uh, we, we compute the, the, the cofactor matrix X transpose uh, X uh, once and do, uh, reuse it in, in, uh, in each uh, conversion step. In that way, we can uh, speed up the, the whole uh, iteration process. So what does this cofactor matrix represent? It captures the correlation between uh, each pair of variables expressed as a sum over products of, of these variables. Now, once we decouple the conversion step, our goal is now to maintain roughly a quadratic number of aggregates under updates. And all of these updates are of the form of sum of products of variables, uh, and they're over the same join. Now, even though they have this very similar form, they're very hard to kind of uh, share uh, in, in, in stand, uh, to, be, uh, to be optimized and share computation um, across them. So the way we solve that is by defining a more compound complex aggregate, which is now a triple of a count, a vector of sums, and a matrix of sums of products of variables. Now, instead of computing just a count, a single uh, scalar value, we now compute this compound aggregate. In order to do that, we also need to define new plus and multiplication operations. And once we have that, we ensure that we have a ring structure. Once we have the ring structure, we can use this, essentially the same computation we have seen for the count query to compute this cofactor coefficients. And the, uh, the only difference is that we have a specialized aggregate values and we have overloaded plus and multiplication operators. And also we have this G functions that map domain values to, to elements of a ring. So what about performance? Well, we, we compared three different incremental strategies, FIVM, classic IVM, and recursive IVM used in DB Toaster to incrementally compute roughly 1,000 aggregates over a string with data set with five relations. And notice that FIVM materializes only nine views because it uses these non-scalar aggregates, more complex aggregates, which transforms into up to two orders of magnitude better performance compared to other systems and also gives the lowest memory consumption uh, compared to uh, IVM and recursive IVM. Okay, so this was just a 10 minute talk. Uh, we have, uh, we essentially covered only the first two topics of this. Uh, we can also use uh, more complex ring structure to enable succinct representation of query result, lossless representation of query result, and we can also do factorized updates where these updates are decomposed akin to tensor decompositions. So I invite you to our poster session in case you want to hear more about this. Thank you. I think um, in the past we have a lot of um, research on how to find the, the best materialized view to cover query or the sub expression in the nation. This is a similar problem you can solve. So how did this method compare with the, the one in the past? Yeah, so in, in our case we use uh, hypertree decomposition as, as the basic guidance to uh, decompose to the query structure mm -hmm. and materialize each individual bags. Mm -hmm. We in fact use also indicator projections to, to, to um, achieve fractional hypertree width. Um, but uh, that is essentially the, the, the main uh, 
uh, approach of, of our work and it, it is very similar to vari uh, variable elimination algorithms which are used for instance in probabilistic graphical models uh, and uh, in, uh, yeah. And how do you find the, the factors? The, how expensive? I mean what's the overhead to find the so, so usually we fix the, the, the tree before we, we start a procedure. So, so we, we have a, like, a, like a view trees with, with individual uh, um, materialized views and then deciding on which views to materialize is actually a function of which input relations can, can, can change. Yeah, in the past I think the main problem with finding the best um, materialized view is that uh, it would be the cost base, right? To find the best one is very hard and takes a long time. Yeah, so, so we don't consider uh, that in, in this approach, uh -huh. but for incremental computation, uh, there are simple heuristics, like if you have a one dominant relation, uh, you would like to put it as close as possible to the root of the tree, such that your updates are propagated as fast as possible. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, I want to release everybody to coffee, so uh, let's thank uh, Minash again.